it hasn't been that long ago, if you talk to someone about mountain lions in South Dakota, they'd look at you like, what? Exactly. My friend, Tim Goodwin, uh, has seen those times change quite a little bit. He's referred to in many circles as the Lion King. That's because he's been responsible for the uh, taking of, uh, I don't know, approaching a dozen mountain lions by now, haven't you? Not quite that many, Gordon, but it's been fun to go out and hunt, it has. So you're something of a legend in the field. Uh, all of these stories we hear about you being 10 foot tall and killing mountain lions with your bare teeth, all of those things aren't really true. No, about five foot six, Gordon, and a 270. Uh... Okay. Browning rifles, kind of. All right. And hopefully the other person can shoot it so I can just watch. Yeah. All right. Well, Tim, uh, you and I have had some real interesting discussions about mountain lions and the way the Game Fishing Parks has managed, or some people might say mismanaged them. Uh, but seriously, uh, Tim is someone who I view as a professional when it comes to uh, mountain lion hunting. Uh, I've watched you hunt. Now, granted, he's never called one in for me yet, but, but Tim, sure tried. Uh, you did try. I got to give you all the credit. Uh, and uh, uh, the mountain lion season uh, has been evolving. Right. A question in my mind, for instance, why didn't we take 100 cats this year? Well, that's probably going to be the question that everybody's going to talk about when we start having commission meetings. And, and the naysayers are going to say, of course, we had too many uh, permits out there for 100 cats, but it really didn't snow until the last two or three weeks. And as you know, the season ended March 31st. And I'm painfully aware of that. And so every day <laughs> I look out there and think, all oh, this great snow and it's starting to melt and you can see their tracks. But uh, basically most of the season we had to just go call and it's really ineffective or harder to call when there's not any snow because you don't know if there's a cat in the area or not. Well, you just said something that uh, uh, bears further comment. You said season ended March 31st, but in reality, the GF&P changed that this year. Correct. So within the boundaries of the fire at Black Hills Fire Protection District, the season is over. But Excellent the point. rest of the state, the mountain lion season is still open. So if one of our viewers sees a mountain lion, mountain lion track or mountain lion sign, they should call me. Exactly. And we'll come help uh, exactly. defend your livestock, your your property, and your family. Exactly. The season is just for the Black Hills Fire District. At the rest of the state, it doesn't have to be private ground. The rest of the state is open until we get a 100 limit. Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, my phone number is going to be on the screen. If you see mountain lion sign or evidence uh -huh. of a mountain lion, call me because we'll bring some professional hunters and, and uh, correct. take care. Should we'll correct that situation, won't we? Exactly. And I would like to say a couple of things about the commission. They did raise the limits uh, two times against the, the Game Fish and Parks recommendation the actual gaming commission did. Uh, last year they went to, I believe it was 70, and this year they went to 100. Uh, we did get 73 cats last year. At the end of the season we had a really good snow, we had a run on them. We didn't even go three over, you have a 24 hour grace period uh, to call in because not replacing the Black Hills South South Reception. So this year I believe the final total was 61. Uh, that's still a lot of cats, but I do believe if uh, we'd have had this snow a month earlier or if the season would have went to one May, I, I do believe we would have got the 100 cats. I don't think uh, the weather and the conditions were the situation, not the number of mountain lions in the hills. Yeah, it's definitely not a problem that there are too few cats in exactly. the hills. Exactly. There are too many. You told a story, your, I believe it was your son who tracked a mountain lion a year or two ago and witnessed three separate deer kills in one day by one lion. Correct. Um, my uh, oldest boy, Tim, also got on a cat track uh, behind Pactoa Lake and went through three kills before he actually killed the lion. That's true. Uh, and there are other uh, stories. These cats, they're huge cats. Uh, biggest one taken so far, I think you may have taken. What was it, 160 oh. some pounds? The biggest one was a guy in Custer that found a deer kill, and that was like 173. Uh, my youngest boy, David, shot one last year, though, for it was 160 or 161. That's the third biggest, yeah. You know, the thing that aggravates me most about that is that I had game camera pictures of that cat, cat, and then your son shoots him. Yeah. <laughs> Truthfully, these are magnificent animals, and uh, we're not on a mission to exterminate them, but to properly manage them, manage exactly. them aren't we, Tim? It's, it's conservation, just like a deer season or an elk season, the same with the lions. 
and there's no shortage of big cats in South Dakota. No, I wish the season was open tonight. We'd be out there. Yes, and if you see a mountain lion, call us. We will be there.